City Pulse is sponsored by CN Vision Image Consulting. Chi, an international focus magazine. Music provided by Houston's own Dynamic Sound. HTV supports local businesses. I'm Jennifer Barrow Wondry, Business Development and Outreach Manager for BARC. And I'm Lynette Bodmer, BARC's Adoptions Coordinator. And we are so excited to be your host for this edition of City Pulse, a show for the City of Houston by the City of Houston. Featuring stories about council leaders and their districts, city departments, and city-sponsored attractions around town. On today's episode, Jones Plaza will be undergoing a makeover, a local college gets a new addition, and we'll also show you a BARC animal who's looking for a forever home. But first, as you can see, we've changed things up a bit on City Pulse, and we're here to give you information about all things Bark. And when you think of Bark, the first thing that comes to mind are pets and adoptions. But what you don't think about is the maintenance and the cost involved in order to keep them healthy. Now that you have some tips on being a better pet owner, it's time to move from pets to the plaza. Houstonians gathered at Jones Plaza, where the centerpiece of the city's historical theater district would be getting a name change and a new look, thanks to a very generous donation by philanthropist Lynn Wyatt. Lynn is a leader beyond compare of Houston's art world, and I'm enormously proud and grateful to let you know that from now on, this place where we stand today will be known as the Lynn Wyatt Square for the Performing Arts. Houston has been my home for my entire life. Therefore, it delights me to give another $10 million as a gift to be donated to this beautiful square for the Performing Arts. Thank you. One that will be enjoyed by all people long after I'm gone. As you can see from the beautiful visuals on the screen behind me, we are on the way to making this a truly iconic and vibrant theatre district front door. A new outdoor stage, a lawn where we can do impromptu performances. It will offer a restaurant where you'll be able to have a bite to eat or something good to drink from lunchtime till the end of the shows. When we come back, area students become first responders thanks to the Office of Emergency Management. Stay with us, more City Pulse after this. We know you didn't do it, just confess. <laughs> okay, you're right. I didn't use the 311 app. I mean, I saw the pothole, but I guess I just got lazy. I mean, I didn't use the 311 app. <laughs> Pathetic. Who says that kind of stuff? <laughs> Use the City of Houston app for all your 311 needs. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. Whether you need a hand shopping for groceries, using up scraps, or finishing every bite, Meal Prep Mate can help you plan better and save more. Whether you're a newbie getting your first taste, a meal prepper honing your chops, or a meal prep pro hungry for a challenge, you can learn how to eat smarter, plan better, and save more at every step of meal prep. When you finish every bite, you save. Start prepping with Meal Prep Mate at savethefood.com. McReynolds Middle School students recently worked to save millions from Category 4 Hurricane Jasmine, and they didn't even leave the city of Houston. Here's how they did it. We will also call the fire and police department to clear and block the area. Dozens of students called weather rangers from McReynolds Middle School 
simulated real situations like hurricanes. They had 15 minutes to pretend to be first responders at work, with each other's division to come up with a solution to get the city clear and running again. They're going to take on the roles and responsibilities that we manage day to day throughout the city. The emergency managers, the police department, public health, fire department, EMS. I think this is very exciting for these boys and girls. The fictitious category for Hurricane, better known as Jasmine, wreaked havoc on local highways, leaking gas, causing fires on hundreds of vehicles that were stranded. Lucien Pravi III has worked for the National Weather Center in Florida and recently opened his own company called Storm Zone. The company helps educate kids during emergencies. A big opportunity for us to kind of branch out, and Houston's the first one. These students are weather rangers learning many things today. First of all, it's all about STEM education, the various career fields that are involved in what you see, putting together a team and then responding to a hurricane. So they're learning hurricane science as well, but they're also learning now problem solving. They're learning uh, communications and how, uh, how can they work together, teamwork. Maybe someday these students will become first responders and work in this very room saving lives. If your home suffered damage because of Tropical Storm Imelda and you are in need of a hammer, shovel, or power drill, then you may want to head to the bank, the Houston Tool Bank, a wonderful resource for nonprofits. The Houston Community Tool Bank is here to support all of the volunteers in Houston doing whatever they're doing to better our community. We've got 20,000 tools, 250 types of tools, and we lend those out to anyone who's doing good. Lone Star College and the 2020 Census next on City Pulse. Vets, you served our country and now you're home looking for a job. But how often have you applied and never heard back? That can be frustrating. That's why Edge for Vets was created to open the world for you. The Houston Airport System and its business partners are hiring and offer this unique opportunity to get an edge in the interview process. To find out more, contact us at edgeforvets.org. One, two, three. Ah! you now and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Houston! Where cultures come, come together. together. Where inspiration takes center stage. And big dreams come true. It's where fun happens every day. Houston's a city on the move. It's a city that makes you groove. That's the heartbeat. That's the rhythm of my town. Of my town. My town. My town. Our town. H-Town. Houston is a city that inspires. Visit Houston for yourself and find out where the inspiration leads you. Welcome back. Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo and Mayor Sylvester Turner kicked off an event to discuss the steps the county and Houston are taking to ensure every person in the area is counted in the 2020 census. Congressional representation and billions of federal dollars are at stake. This is the year to make sure that each and every person stands up and makes themselves counted. And that is why there is such an important presence in Harris County. We started this with federal dollars, a $2 million grant that came from Sheila Jackson Lee and Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison. So I know what federal dollars can do. They can seed or they can provide billions of dollars to communities who deserve them for roughly for every person counted, regardless of your age, regardless of your ethnicity, your language, your religion, every single person in, in dollars and cents, about $1,500 per person. If you live in this city of Houston, whether you are homeless, whether you are a college student, whether you are elderly, young, 
whether you speak English or you don't, immigrant, doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter what your sexual orientation may be, that if you live in this city, I happen to be your mayor, you are welcome in this city, we want you to fill out these forms, respond, in order for us to meet your every need. The Lone Star College System has added a new state-of-the-art center to its East Aldine campus. 500 new students will find college transfer courses as well as workforce training in high-demand fields. Oh, Today we have the building dedication for the Lone Star College East Aldine Center. And this building is a representation of the partnership of the community, the city, the county, people who want opportunities and access, and we're so very excited. This is uh, the makerspace, so it's part of the library at Lone Star North Terrace. Today we have uh, our 3D printing out and our virtual reality out, but we also do a whole bunch of other things. Uh, wood burning, crochet, uh, 3D printing, uh, audio editing, video editing, all sorts of uh, really cool stuff that the students enjoy. It was the dream of so many wonderful people and this community has just really welcomed us and we were so happy and I'm proud to say that almost half of the students that are currently enrolled are enrolled in our math and natural uh, math and biology department classes and uh, we're pretty proud of that fact. To see this facility here and the river being cut, cut it says to all of our children in all of our communities, you are important. And we are going to invest in you. And when you provide first class facilities, it says to all of our children and all of our neighborhoods, you are important. And we're not going to overlook you. Right now we have a cohort of about 110 students and they're in ninth grade and then we'll have 10th graders, 11th graders, and 12th graders. So when we talk about lifelong education, it starts from ninth grade and it goes on to the associate's degree at Lone Star and next year we'll be offering bachelor's degrees as well. That does it for this edition of City Pulse. Remember, many pets such as this one are ready to find their forever home. Again, I'm Jennifer Breyer Wandry, and it was so great to tell you more about Bark. And I'm Lynette Bodmer. Be sure to take care of your furry friends. Until next time, have a great day, and thanks for watching HTV. Your story, your voice, your station. Just don't call me. <laughs> 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 like, be free.